Yeah, so the whole theme of today then is what needs fixing is this, not this. And I've roped in a couple of viewers to show you that exactly. For the past week or maybe two, I've seen so many people being, I'm going to say it, I'm going to use the word, negative about their gardens. But I said it, I used the N word and I don't care. So here's the thing. Yes, today we're going to look at my garden. We're going to do a walk around, talk about everything for now. But it's with the focus of it being a proper attitude adjustment. Today, well, not today, but now that you're watching this video, is actually the first day of spring. So that's a kind of like exciting thing. But comes with all these expectations put on it as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those horrible down feelings about your garden and we're going to fix them. And it's actually way easier than you think. You don't need to hire a, a, a JCB digger to like reroute everything. You don't have to cut anything down. You don't have to go on a mad spree buying plants and planting things. It's simply by doing this. So this is a good place to start, but before we do, for all the new guys, this is how it works. This is a drawn or a plan of our gardens that Kate made. And all the areas in our gardens have names so you know where I am. And there'll be a wee pop-up number to show you where I am. So right now we're in what's called the beer garden. And it's a great place to start because there is a huge big flower bed here that is normally bursting with colour. We've got two cherry trees that just have the most amazing blossoms on them. We've got the new big raised planter truck um, that I put the strawberries in. We've got hanging baskets. You know, there's lots of potential here. And in June, July and August, it is bursting with colour. But right now, it kind of looks bare. So a good place to start then. I mentioned the trug. This is called a veg trug, but it's basically just a big planter on legs. So it's nice and high and you can get to it. But what we did was we took all our strawberry plants from the vertical pallet planter that we built that was over there because I wasn't happy with them there and we've put them in here. Now, there are leaves on most of them. There are little plants sitting above the surface. Doesn't really look anything special. I mean, there's no strawberries yet. There's no flowers on them. It's mostly straw in this. You could be looking at it and going, I wish they'd hurry up. Can't wait. That's that's more likely what you say. Can't wait till there's flowers on it. Can't wait till there's strawberries. Do you know what? Remember I said about how we were going to do this? Let's take a step closer and actually look at them. So let's have a very strange, big, long shot so you can see in here then. We're getting up close and that's what I want you to do in your gardens. In here, you're going to see these are all my strawberries. So this end is the pineberries, which are the white strawberries. That end is the Everbearer Albion, which are the standard red type strawberries that we grow. Well, we're just at the end of winter. We are still getting lots of hard frosts. In fact, I think we've had a hard frost every day for about six days. We'll keep getting hard frosts for a good while yet, possibly mid to late May. But look, your little strawberries, it's all about the crowns. If you've got those crowns buried, got them covered, they will survive, they're protected, and they start to bring on new leaves. So this is what we're excited about. These strawberries are still alive. They're quite probably going to give us fruit this year. They've got masses of gorgeous, new, healthy-looking foliage on them. I think there's a lot to be excited about here, and I can't wait to show you as the season goes on. Hands up if you remember us building this bed. So last summer, this was bang, a big blast of colour. We had sunflowers, dwarf sunflowers, rudbeckia, sea holly, the cherry trees, uh, mimulus, uh, geraniums, obricia. There's probably more that I can't even remember. Um, there was also some random antirhinums and things in here as well. It was awesome. And I've said before, this is the bed we see from the kitchen. So if we're in sort of like cooking, doing dishes at the window, that kind of thing, this is the main focus that we see through that window. 
And last summer, it was amazing. But the geraniums, because they were white, and I've spoken about this before, when you choose your colours, choose things that stand out. And with all the red here, the white really popped. Looked amazing. Looking at the kitchen window now, what I see is, to be honest, fence. Yeah, on a bad day, when I'm feeling down, negative, grumpy about things, I just see the fence, that's all I see. What I don't see, remember all the spring bulbs I planted? They're all coming up. This bed is going to be full of tulips and it won't be long before that happens. Right now it's full of the greenery of tulips. Which in itself, isn't that an amazing positive thing? All those little blasts of the future coming up, telling me what's going to be here, it's going to be fab. We're going to have orange tulips and white tulips in this bed. We're also, because I can see them, we're going to have loads more mims because they've self-seeded, looking brilliant. The abricia has started to get little buds and you guys know what that looks like. It cascades purple, looks fantastic. But I want to show you something that, again, is difficult to see unless you actually make an effort. And it's going to be the thing that's going to pop on this bed. In fact, actually, there's two. So again, get the feet moving. And I hope you're taking notes. Tell me, what are the things that you currently feel down and negative about in your garden? And after this video, I want you to go out and have a look and look for the positives and then tell me about them in the comments. Give me the negative and how it turned into a positive. Attitude adjustment. It's really hard to not feel excited and positive when you see cherry blossoms just starting to burst. And even more so, if you remember, I got really down about this tree because it lost all of its blossoms and then lost all of its leaves, and I thought it was dying. Turns out it's the type of tree it is. I meant to prune it after it's finished blossoming. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> you learn, but yeah. So that's one of the things that is going to be stunning in a matter of weeks, I'd say, if that. The second thing here isn't far at all. And it is going to be stunning. Look at the amount of buds. All of it is just covered in buds. I really just can't wait. It's an early flowering variety, which means we will get flowers in this in, in May and they'll sit here and it'll be stunning through early summer. But it also, as you can see, it doesn't die. It'll go through winter, dormant and come back again in spring. And because it's an early flowering type, we don't have to cut it back. So we don't have to wait on it regrowing all those tendrils and then wait on them producing buds and stuff. It means it starts really fast and starts to look really good and it adds colour and a bit of a feature here. Things are coming. There are buds breaking the surface. Oh yeah, and another thing, the wee bird houses. We're starting to see blue tits checking out all of the bird houses. I say starting, they've been doing it now for about four weeks. It's really cool, I love that. The, the wee songbirds get me so excited. <laughs> yeah, so here's me sitting on a beautiful sunny morning complaining about how bare things are. And Lindsay is out standing in the snow in Wisconsin with the most positive sound in her voice talking about how great her garden is. That's the kind of kick in the pants we need sometimes to remind us it's awesome that we've got a garden, things are going to change, the garden needs dormant periods, it's good for it. Yeah. We need to fix this, not this. We are in Wisconsin, which is zone 4B, and I am super excited because the last few days we have actually had fairly warm temperatures for us, right around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which means most of our snow is now disappearing. So that's always a really welcome sign in spring and it's kind of fun to come out and see if anything is growing or not growing and assess 
what I'm gonna need to do for clean up this spring. So behind me is the flower bed that runs along the front of our house. It is Western facing and mostly in here are perennials and tulips and daffodils. So this is really my first spring color and I actually saw a few daffodils start to pop up, which is really exciting and a little bit motivating to get out here and start getting this garden cleaned up. So this time in March, everything is basically different shades of brown and we are waiting for about another month before we will actually start to see the thousands of daffodils and tulips that we had planted last year. It's gonna be beautiful and it's just a waiting game right now. We have to wait for the ground to thaw a little bit more. Today is the first morning that I've come out and checked the garden and there are actually a few things that are fairly winter hardy that have a little bit of growth. So let's go take a look. In this bed, I have several hookahs, or sometimes we call them coral bells. This one is a wild rose and they are fairly evergreen. However, I will come in and trim all of these leaves off in the spring. But if I dig deep, there's new growth under here. I'm shocked that we have this much growth. It has been real cold other than the last couple days. So that's really encouraging to see this and what a pretty purple color to have show up in early spring. Also in this bed, I have a beautiful shrub rose. And while it needs to be pruned in the spring, if I look really closely at the bottom, the base is still green. So that, again, an encouraging sign that it made it through winter and, and we'll have more beautiful roses this summer. So the other garden that I wanted to show you is actually my vegetable garden or my raised bed garden. We're now in the back of my house. We are back lined with woods. And so the sun is just peeking up in the morning. And this is kind of reality here in Wisconsin. We're mid-March and we're still covered in snow back here. So I can't even get back here to clean the beds, put compost on them, any of that stuff quite yet. But give it another month. The beds will all be cleaned out Behind this row of lavender, we'll probably see several hundred white lion daffodils pop up, which is going to be such a welcome sign in another month. It's just kind of one more step towards summer. So a lot of work back here that needs to happen, but we'll get there. The snow slowly melts and we can do a little bit more each day. So thanks for this opportunity to share where we are at this time of spring in Wisconsin. I hope everybody has a fantastic gardening year. I hope Mother Nature is kind to you and we will see you later. Thank you, bye. I'm gonna take you to the fence garden now because I think this is a good thing to point out because it's about what you guys see on video versus what we see and how we have to think around things. This is the fence garden or the walled garden. That's our kind of jokey term for it. You guys see it a lot cause it's my main path to the greenhouse. You'll have seen us actually build this bed and put this path in in a previous video. So any of you that are regular viewers know all about this bed. But what you see from this kind of distance shot is all the little bits of color pop out at you. The shrubs that are green pop out at you. And this is the difference. Our view of it is very different. And I suspect this is the same for you and your garden. I would see something different from you. Let me show you. And I hope you're getting some awesome light flare because the sun's really low at this time of year and it's behind me. So I hope it's really quite like, you know, cinematic as they say. But I'm gonna bring you in close, feet again. So another bit of homework for you guys then. In the comments, tell me, what do you see here? What's your take on this little spot? Because here is my take. I know there is heaps of color here. We've got <laughs> Chinoxia, we've got Primula, we've got Daffodils, loads of color. I can even see there are some tulips coming up. However, you guys probably don't remember, so it hasn't kind of twigged in your memory. What I see is that the astrangia is gone. Now it's not dead, it's here. It's just not up yet, because it comes up in flowers later in the season. And it's stunning when it does. This is it. And we've got little bits of it that have self-seeded. So, you know, it's probably going to be glorious again. But this is what I'm talking about with your attitude. 
sometimes it's helpful for somebody else to point out what they see because we focus on things that we see as wrong or the things we want to change or like me in this spot, I remember something amazing that's not there now. I forget to look at the amazing things that are here. And that's why it's full of daffodils because I put all these daffodils in because one year I was so crazy excited about daffodils and it brought me so much joy. So I have to remember that. I have to remember that this little spot is joy. It's Eli happy and I give it to you. Right, I'm going to do the long shot of the fence bed because I always do this for you. It's a really difficult shot to do this one. So um, let's hope I haven't cut my head off. But again, all of the colour I was talking about. So you see all these little purple crocuses? That's the spring bulbs that we planted a few months ago. Again, took you guys on the journey with me. Look at it now, it's like planting things for the future, planting things for the feel good of spring when it comes. Again, more daffodils, so all these spring bulbs are a brilliant one for bringing some colour in early in the year. But also, you can't go wrong with primrose and primula. They're just awesome little flowers that just do really well through the winter for us, are quite hardy. And um, we've also got all the usual anemones, more crocuses, violas, stunning, and of course the shrubs. So the schemia is one of my favourites. It flowers in kind of March time and gives the most amazing scent and then has berries for the rest of the year. Lovely red berries, um, but it's evergreen, so it's always green, you know? So, so that's a positive. Yeah, okay, I'm not seeing crazy, amazing stuff here, but there is so much that is good. Um, <laughs> I may turn you around to talk about the camellia because I'm not sure what your view's like from there, but this is a good, interesting topic. So we'll, we'll get you some of that amazing light flare again, cause you know, it's cool, come on. This, look at the size of it. This is a camellia that was a present from our mates Haley and Luke. Um, Kate loves camellias, we've got two out front. Um, difference being, this guy's healthy as, look at him. He's put on so much growth. The leaves are really dark and leathery. He looks amazing. He's never flowered. And I know why. It is because there is a certain part of our garden that never gets direct light on it. And it is this. It kind of starts about here and it covers what I call the situtri, and I'll talk about that in a second. It never gets direct light. This really isn't the place we should have this. It's fine, it's healthy, but it's that thing of it's surviving rather than thriving. So it needs lots more sunlight if it's going to flower. The ones out front are south facing, boy do they flower, but they also get hit badly with frost and wind and snow and yeah, balancing act. But you know, I could get all down the fact that it never flowers. I don't even know what colour it's meant to be if it flowers. Or I could just get excited about the fact that look how healthy and amazing it is. Nature's just amazing if you just let it show you. Okay then, some of my spring bulbs in my garden Let's do something fun. I'm going to pass you over to Jeanette, who is in Essex, down south. They get way better weather than us. So go and see the difference in her garden, how much further on it is than even mine. Hello everyone, my name is Jeanette. I feel like I am so delighted to join Kate and Eli on their wonderful channel. I feel like they're my friends because I'm in their garden with them all the time as well, which is such fun. Anyway, I thought you might like to see what is happening down my end of the country. I'm down in the southeast. I'm about 30 miles from London, 30 miles from our coast, which is good old South End on Sea, where you get your fish and chips and your donuts. I'm in Essex in a place called Langdon Hills. And I thought you might like to see what's going on weather-wise for me. So I have a tiny little garden compared to some, but it is my happy, happy place. It's about five degrees at the moment. It's early in the morning, it's about 7 a.m. And according to my good friend, Alexa, she tells me it's going to be about 15 today. Beautiful, clear, blue skies, 
It's a little chilly at the moment. I have daffodils. I'm so excited. Daffodils and tulips, which I planted last October. And I planted about 10 different varieties of daffodils, all in little groups. So they are popping up everywhere and they will come up at different times. And I can't remember what's where, which is half the fun and the excitement. And I also have alliums. These are alliums. They'll come later in the year, probably around May and June time. But this is my garden. I have a lovely little circular lawn with lots of beds all the way round. This is spectacular at the moment. It's a Petilia red robin. I planted it last summer. So this is the first time I'm going to get to see the beautiful red new growth. That's very exciting. So it just goes round in a circle. I have this area here. This is my next project. Now I had boxwood hedges running up along that side and along that side leading up to that's not a gate it's a garden illusion gate it's actually a mirror but it brings light to this very shady corner this corner never gets any light but i had to take all the boxwoods out we suffered terribly from box tree moth and box tree caterpillar and after trying to battle it for a couple of years i gave up i took them all out so this is my next project for redesigning a shade garden and I even think I might have a little seat in there somewhere. Everything's waking up, we've got buds on everything, it's looking beautiful. So I've had quite a lot of um, winter interest really because I do have quite a lot of evergreens, that's my trachycarpus. Should have put the fountain on for you and I've got a heuchera garden here doesn't look much at the moment, but it looks gorgeous in the summer because I've got all these different varieties, which just looks lovely. This is one of my pruning contenders. It's a Chinese plumbago. That's so easy to do. You just basically hack it down and it still looks gorgeous. And I have this bed here as well. That's a dogwood. So that's going to be chopped down as well because the stems are turning less red. So I need to chop them down. You can see my cabin there. That's our office. I also have all my seeds sown in there. So if we go inside and have a look at that, I only have flowers, no vegetables at the moment. So these ones down the bottom, they are all doing quite well. The ones at the top, they're still germinating. They're on their heat mat. I'm still waiting for some action from those. That's why the domes are on. So that's my seeds on the go. I had some devastation this morning. Came out to this. Foxes, I imagine, have been down at my allium bulbs. So I've got to clean that. My my ornamental cabbages, as you can see, have beginning to bolt. And then finally, I have this little area here. This is kind of my working area. I have a little greenhouse, which is more of a cold frame. But that's really lovely and very handy for moving things on, hardening things off and cuttings, etc. Nothing much in there at the moment, but I love that. And also I have my potting bench which is invaluable. So that's it, a very, very quick whistle stop tour around my garden. Thank you so much, Kate and Eli. I love being in your garden with you and thank you for coming into my garden with me. Take care, everyone. Bye. Hello. Hello. What color is that you're painting, honey? Um, sky blue pink. <laughs> I don't think folk will get that, that's a Scottish thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's our favourite, it's red cedar. So I just thought, because I know you guys like the whole thing with Kate painting things red, uh, new fence, our fence and gate basically didn't survive the storms. Um, so we've got a nice lovely new fence which Kate is painting. Lovely new gate which I love and this is not the most glamorous thing in the world. That is a screen 
that hides the wheelie bins. I'm going to show you because somebody asked me what a wheelie bin was. That's a wheelie bin. Okay, it's just a bin on wheels. Bin, trash can. There you go. So that's what Kate was doing in the background of last week's video. She made that screen to hide the wheelie bins. And that planter, Kate made that planter. And painted it red. Please. And painted it red, she says. Okay, um, I'm going back in. Would you want me to show them? What's your positive for just now? That one day I will finish painting this gate. That's a fence, honey. Fence. Right, what let's go. Mind. Let's just leave her to it. That was the hint to go away. Look, Lindsay, I'm using the handle. This bed is going to change a lot over the year. The plan for this one is that it's going to be lots of succession sown crops. Quick crops like lettuces. It's also going to have things like carrots and beetroot and my broccoletti and all that kind of stuff in here. For the moment, we've got one row of Amsterdam force and carrots that have been sown. Not expecting that to germinate anytime soon. I've got a couple of rows of these little lamb's lettuce or corn salad. I've got a row of my winter gem lettuce. Um, I've got some wave mustard and some dragon's tongue mustard. Um, the dragon's tongue mustard is currently looking a little bit poorly because it only went out yesterday and then we got hit with frost. So it'll take a wee bit to pick up again. But um, experience has shown me that it'll be fine and it will pick up. And I've got a couple of random rows of spring onions because I had loads and I had to find somewhere to put them. This is a big thing for me. I've always really struggled with winter. I found winter so difficult and I would really get down. I would just struggle to get through. This year, I haven't had that at all. And Kate and I were chatting about it the other day and we're saying we think it's because I've been growing right through the winter. I've had greenery in the greenhouse. And we've been going and picking food to eat from the greenhouse. And I think that's really made a difference to my headspace. And now, it's in the beds, because I hate looking out the window and you just see blank empty beds. So, I'm going to start every year now to try and keep growing over winter, because it's such a positive thing. It's changed my attitude about winter. I'll show you the other beds. Let's go. On the map, this would be the veg garden. The veg garden, right next to the chilutery, opposite the greenhouse. First thing you see when you come in the gate. Three beds. Now, interesting thing, you can see there are different type of netting on the beds. These two is something called Enviromesh. It's a really, really fine insect netting. That one is a much wider netting. That one is just to stop the birds and local cats and foxes and things digging in the garden. I keep getting asked if this stops the slugs. It doesn't. <laughs> it stops a lot of the insects, so it helps with a lot of flies and things that lay mites and butterflies and things that lay caterpillars. That's the idea of this stuff. But let me show you what's in the beds because I actually have three full beds for the first time ever. It's not anything amazing, but it's still produce in my beds, which I think is awesome. This one I call the onion bed because, to be honest, it's um, full of oniony type things. Up to here, this is garlic. Again, everything you're seeing, you guys have seen me doing videos, so you saw me plant the garlic. It is ducat garlic, it's a Scottish variety. It does so well, I'm well chuffed with it. Um, and I sent some off to Jessie at Plot 37 last year. So she's actually grown it in her plot as well. So you can see how it fares down south compared to up here. Then I've got onion on this side. First year ever grown onions. I'd never had any intention to grow onions, but Lindsay, um, gave me a pile of onion sets that she wasn't using. So I've got two types. I've got onion radar, brown onion, and I've got snowball white onion. They're all doing absolutely awesome. I'm quite chuffed. And in between, I've got little rows of spring onions as well. Hence why it's called the onion bed. 
It's a weird one, this one, because <laughs> you don't really see the greenery. I know this bed is absolutely full, but you don't see it. And I think a lot of the time that's the attitude adjustment. It's you want to see big instant hits of, oh my God, there's stuff growing. But you have to kind of come over here and lift the net to really see what's going on. Not to say it's not going to be so exciting the first time we harvest anything. Honey? Yeah? See that middle bed? Yeah. Has that got onions in it? I, I just said that, yeah. And the one nearest me, that doesn't have onions in it? No, that one's the wave mustard and stuff that's in. Right, so the middle bed, that's got onions in it. And the one nearest me, that doesn't have onions in it? So you've got a plain ane and an ingin and an ah. Seriously? Yeah, right, funny. Let me explain this one to everyone that's not from Dundee. Kate's from Dundee. A plain ane and an ingin I can't even do it because I'm not from Dundee. A plain ane and an ingin and an ah. I can't do it. A plain ane and an ingin and an ah is a Dundonian asking for two pies, one that's plain and one that's got onion in it. Is that correct? Yes, it is. See, you guys think I just have to cope with the Americans and the Canadians. Got to cope with the Dundonians as well. She's also to blame for the satutery, just so you know. And of course, that would have been an awesome segue to Mark's video, given Mark's a Dundonian but I'm going to need a bit of help with this, you guys. He did a wee video, but he was too shy to chat in it, so I couldn't really do anything with it. But give him lots of love in the comments, and hopefully we could get him to join in on one of the other videos. Thank you, Mark. So for the last viewer's video, then, I'm going to pass you to Judy. And this one I thought would be awesome, because Judy is also in the central belt of Scotland, the same as us, but she's on the other side over in East Kilbride. I know East Kilbride well, so hello to all my family in East Kilbride. And here's Judy's garden difference. Hello, this is my March garden just down the road uh, from Kate and Eli in the Central Belt in Scotland. There's not very much happening, but this is Shadow, looking grumpy. Say hi, Shadow. So we've got, these are all the fruit bushes, which have got nothing going on. One, two, three leaves, maybe. This one's autumn raspberry, I think. And that's the uh, black currant, I think. I didn't label any of them, so who knows. Um, this is a blueberry bush. We've got some little buds coming up. Over here is my peony bush. There's underwhelming but down here actually you can see where the peony will come out of these are going to be my flowers for my wedding in May so come on hurry up I did have three peony bushes this was one and it is now a pot with pink blueberries in it because of someone digging it up this is another peony bush. No bush. But again, you can see the buds. Uh, under here somewhere. I don't want to dig it up because again, it has got covering. Because of you. Yes, because of you. You don't look sorry. He's not sorry. In here we've got, this is my picket fence made out of pallet wood and my daffodils which are yet to do very much give it time we can go inside the vegetable patch this is these are just parsnips <laughs> uh, eventually and that's the look the rhubarb is doing something it's doing something um, this is the garlic. I've got four kinds of garlic this year. I've got, this is mostly a garlic bed. These are all spring onions. I've been overwintered and haven't done very much. But I've also got elephant garlic tucked in here, which is doing really well. 
and this is my broccoli, my purple sprouting broccoli. Are there any purple sprouts? Mm, no. But there's a yellow sprout, so hopefully it will become purple. Is that purple? No. Also yellow. Uh -huh. What about that? That's, uh, no. Oh well. No purple sprouts just now. Maybe. And it's just um, black magic kale. That's been that's been doing well all winter, really. Yeah, it's not so greenhouse. There's not much in here at the minute, although I do have some <coughs> cabbages that are all gone because they've been eaten by the slugs. But the lettuce is doing brilliantly. It loves this weather. The last two weeks, it sprung to life. So this is uh, Valdor and. Marvel of Four Seasons, and they've been overwintered. I planted these in October. Um, again, spring onions, um, sorry, sweet peas. These were saved seed from last year that I planted in the potting shed in October, and they have been overwintered. And they're now out here because they're doing so well that they can do with a bit of colder weather for a bit of a challenge. So they're doing really nicely. So they'll go out in the ground soon. In the my lovely potting shed, which has got a nice window in it, <laughs> you can see bits and pieces. Not very much. More spring, more um, sweet peas. God, what is that word? And various seeds: calendulas, cosmos, cavallonero. Coming up. So it all looks a bit bare. There's not a great deal going on, but. It's definitely getting warmer and brighter, so that's nice. Don't know about you guys, but I just want to totally hug Shadow. So I'll close out today with this massive wide shot of the garden that will let you see the areas that are in shadow. So you know what I was talking about earlier about some plants not flowering because they're in shade all the time and stuff. Also, thanks to all of the awesome viewers who sent me a wee clip of their gardens to join in with looking at things this month. I'm going to do more of that, so keep tuned and watch for those. As always, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week. And if you want another wee blast, awesome video here for you to go and watch and find out more about all the bits of the garden we built. I'll see you guys.